do you notice how much uh, hydration pause has to keep having? He he's finished that entire green juice here. We're about twenty <laughs> minutes into the episode. He's drinking an entire gallon of water and green juice. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Walkthrough Podcast presented by BAM, your go-to marketing and branding podcast. Listen, if you're sick of having your fingers slammed in a door while door knocking or calling expired listings where they want $100 million more than what the actual market value of their home is, well, too bad. You're still going to have to do those. But (laughs) however, imagine a world where you could focus a little bit less on that and get leads through your social media channels. If this is you, then you have found the right show. My name is Dan O'Neill, team leader here in New York and Florida, and today I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Eric, the broke agent, Simon. We are also joined by sales leader, sales director, maybe the biggest biceps in real estate, dare I say, and maybe any minute now, a first-time father, uh, Mr. Jason Posnick. Jason, thank you to your wife and baby for not coming out today and doing the show. And lastly, from God's country, a.k.a. my second home, a.k.a. Naples, Florida, coming to us live from Rocco's Tacos in Mercado is Miss <laughs> Natalie Perez. Natalie, thank you for joining us. In store for you today, what agents should or should not post around the NAR settlement? What content agents should be making right now? Our 60-second tips. Make sure to smash that like button. Wish Eric a happy birthday. Get in BAMX. Reminder Media is the best. And let's get to it. Y'all ready? Ready. All right. Love it. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. All right. Topic number one is, of course, naturally the NAR settlement and maybe what we can be posting, what we shouldn't be posting, uh, ways to go about it through our social channels. There has been a lot, a lot of, of press and coverage on this. So I'm interested to hear your guys' take on maybe what is the best route to go when posting about this. And Mr. Jason Posnick, I know that you posted on your story. It looked like you were, you were highlighting a George R.R. R. Martin book, which I respect very much. And it looked to be the entire, the entire case or settlement. So I'm going to kick it to you first. What are you telling your agents within your organization or what are you doing specifically yourself uh, in sharing uh, the news and also maybe future practices? Yeah, I think the, there's a lot of what not to do first, Dan. I think, you know, there's the news media, we got big media, we got all these wrong headlines. And I think the worst thing that we as agents can do is try to combat that. Start putting out saying that something is wrong or different or there's no need to make it argumentative or make it a, a con- conflict type of situation, right? As agents, this time more than ever, we've got to lead with value. We've got to make sure that consumers understand our value. And so what I've actually been coaching our agents to do that's worked amazingly well is putting out content, telling the story of clients they've helped. None of this like, look at me, sold another house. Like No one cares how many ho- houses you've sold anymore. You've got to be different. And people want to hear the problems you solve, the ways that you solve them, and how big your freaking biceps are. And the way to do that, Dan, is via video. <laughs> I'm just kidding about the biceps. No one really gives a shit. Uh, but there you go, Nat. You weren't kidding. It, I wasn't kidding. Uh, <laughs> biceps matter. But seriously, tagging or doing a story, telling the story of a client you helped, how you met them, what they were facing, what the obstacle was, how you overcame it, what was the happy ending. Even better than as agents, tag the client in the post. Because it's amazing that then you get exposed to their entire sphere, talking about them, their goals, their story, and how you help them. So what not to do? Don't be argumentative. Don't call out what's wrong. Don't argue about commissions and what you're worth. Rather, go show people what you're worth by sharing the experiences and the stories that you've done. Boom. Mm. Wow. Jason. Oh, my God. Clip Pause. that, Haley, Clip that. immediately. <laughs> Include the bicep thing right there. Let's end the show. This guy came out absolutely All right, good, good talking to you guys. Uh, Fantastic. I'm going to do that. So incredible. What Thanks, not Pause. to do. Dan, I just, I just want to say, Pause, I agree with you about not combating the negative ha- headlines because we don't really know what shape this is going to take yet. So a lot of agents are kind of yeah. jumping the gun. They're green screening that CNR, CNN article that says Dude, everybody, um, you know, the, the, yeah. si- the end of the 6%, 6%. commission. And um, – Yeah, I think people need to wait a little bit. So Natalie, what are your thoughts on this? What should agents be doing on social media or what should they not be doing? Yeah, I got to say, pause. That was a great answer. Um, You know, for me, I haven't really posted much about it at all. Um, I think focusing on the value, like Jason said, that we provide and not... The media has done such a great job of, you know, making whatever story they want and pushing it. Realizing that as agents who use social media for business, we are also the media. So whatever you say 
even if five people read it, it's got an impact. So make it positive, add value constantly. And if that just looks like, hey, I'm going to go live and ask my audience questions. Hey, what have you heard? And let me answer this the best I can because it's brand new. It's business as usual. Our listing agreements have not changed. You know, I think primarily as a buyer's agent, it's actually an exciting time. I think it's going to weed out a lot of, you know, agents Fools. who might not take their, yes, <laughs> who might not take their business seriously. And, you know, bringing that to the, to a listing appointment as well. Say, Hey, you know, X amount of percentage in my market, the deals that have closed have had a buyer's agent. So, you know, using the language and, and just meeting them, you know, where they're at and going from there, there's no point in reinventing the wheel right now. There's in my opinion, just yeah, keep, I- keep doing you. I love that strategy. So, Go live on Instagram. How about that one, Dan? Pause. You know, mm-hmm. you, you could have your title be answering questions about the NAR settlement. That way you're having one on, not one on one, but conversational answers as opposed to quick little tidbits on social where you're posting a carousel post or you're trying to green screen something like it gives you more time to have that conversation. I've never heard that angle before, Natalie. Totally. Genius. 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 Point for Natalie. Next po- hey, point for pause. It. We are mm-hmm. crushing it right now. Now, Dan, it's up to you. Can we continue racking up points on the board? What are you doing on social media about the NAR settlement? Are you doing anything at all? So you don't I have, have not. To. So, Good. Well, so I, I think it is important to do it, right? I, I think uh, as leaders in the industry or future leaders, as the next generation, I think we, we for sure have to. And when the news broke, uh, I did create like – I spent like probably an hour making these four or five-minute long videos. I spent like way more. If I say an hour, I mean like five hours. But what I realized was I didn't want to rush to any conclusions. I didn't want to jump out there and post something for clickbait or be the first one to, to say something, right, or to green screen it. I really wanted to take time to see what the reactions were going to be, to get into the, the BAM, uh, the Bam X uh, live stream yesterday with Lisa, Giannos, Byron, Tom. I wanted to hear what Tom Ferry had to say today. I wanted to hear what Surhan had to say. And then I wanted to form my own opinion. And more than anything, I want to focus when I do share it, in my opinion, it's not going to be an opinion on on what has happened. It's going to be, in my opinion, on what is the opportunity and what to do next. So I want to highlight what we're doing as a team, whether it be role playing, whether it be you know getting our buyer packets dialed and our buyer consultations dialed in, uh, how we're making sure that our agents are, are best equipped, um, and how we're making sure that our clients are in the best possible position to to win. Um, not rushing, like I said, to go out and get clicks and just to post something to post something. So that's that's what we are going to be doing. That's what I've been working on. And um, I don't think that there's necessarily, unless you're running a media company like, like you, Eric, I don't think there is necessarily a, a speed to, to lead in this in this case. <laughs> this is a big deal and a lot of thought and preparation should go into, in, into it. So that's what we're doing. That was a great answer, Dan. Points for you as well. Ooh. All right. Well, now you got, you're batting clean up, Mr. Mr. Media, Mr. Media oh. God. So what do, you, what do you got here, Barry Mr. Burns? Otani here. <laughs> yeah, well, well, Mr. Otani might not know, be in the MLB anymore. I'm basically just going to parrot what everybody else was saying because I am not an active agent, so I don't want to uh, I, I don't want to pontificate what agents should necessarily be posting, but I will talk about what Chris Giano said in our live stream yesterday in the BAMX after party. I asked this exact same question to him, CEO of Humanize, and he said that agents complaining – about the settlement and saying stuff like ah, "NAR screwed us," and you know they're or making jokes and memes about how awful this is and how buyers agents are going to be dead and they're acting like it's the end of the world and the six percent commission is finished and woe is me. This is probably not the best strategy to go about this, right? Like if you're sharing content about how NAR screwed us and this is awful, imagine the perspective of your clients seeing an agent sharing that, saying like "We're screwed," "Oh my God, NAR just came and screwed us." Like really? Like you can't adapt and evolve to that. Like that's my job to share these memes about how we're screwed. Right. Like that's, so so you you are, so you are going to, you can, you are going to be continuing to, okay. I'm the only one. I'm the untouched. No, I'm I'm just kidding. I I think that, (laughs) you know, my audience is agents, right? My audience is talking about the grievances of what it's like to be a buyer's agent in 2021 when there's a million offers and rates were at two and a half percent and you had to go 40% over asking. Like that is the sort of content that we cover. So it may seem hypocritical for me to say, you probably shouldn't be sharing these memes or these grievances. But I do believe that because like I said, if I am a client, which I am right now, and my buyer's agent was sharing stuff about how awful the <laughs> settlement is and how he's not going to be able to get the same commission or whatever. Like who's, that's who's your agent, look. whoever your agent is. I mean, we got to, we got to talk. We gotta, can we have him on the show next week? Like it, does he even exist? Like this has been, this has been exist, yeah. 
Is it you, Dan? Does he wear pinstripes? No. What is he on the Yankees? No. <laughs> he's he's a great he's a great agent. There's just no inventory right now. You guys you guys know how it is. So I, I think the move here really like like Lisa said on the live stream is to come at it from a place of service, not why you should use me, but how we could help you. And I think also the best strategy is probably not saying anything at all yet because this is such a moving target. So if you jump the gun and you green screen one of those articles and you get it wrong, then there's proof that you got that wrong if something changes here in July and August. So it's probably best to just, I like handling the questions like Natalie said, doing a live stream, maybe taking down all of the questions that your clients are asking, crafting a blog post, or maybe it's a longer form YouTube video that you send out to people that answers these questions and then kind of figuring out your content strategy. But right now, I mean, we're less than a week out of this thing. It's probably best to not just like jump the gun and say something. Agreed. Wow. Point, points all around. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Huh? And uh, yeah, that's, that's the end of that one. <laughs> Sorry. I can't, <laughs> I keep, someone, I, I can't someone keep, either save me here. What the hell's going I, on? I can't stop thinking about your, your agent and how long you've been looking for. I mean, the guy needs to go create or, or girl needs to go create some inventory, huh? What, is, it, is it Mitchell? Is it Jaegerman? Who, who's, who's your buyer's agent here? <laughs> Yeah, it's one of it's one of my frat bros from from USC. No, it's it, his name's Robbie Sakura with Compass, just like Natalie. He's a great agent. There's just not much inventory right now, so yeah. it's shout 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 out. To I Robbie. mean, it's really All my right. fault, honestly. We're switching locations every five seconds. By the way, that live stream in Bam X mm. that we did, we did an after party. So we did a live stream yesterday on the NAR settlement. We had over two thousand live viewers. Shout out Byron. Lisa Chanati, Tom Tool, Chris Janos, who joined us. We had an after party in BAMX where we did a live q and If you're not a member yet of BAMX, this is the month to do it. Use code MADNESS. How about that? Don't use what? code walkthrough. Use what? code MADNESS for 20% off. That's an additional 10% off. That is double the percentage. Dan, I didn't tell you that. I wanted to spur that on the show. This is breaking <laughs> I news. I use know you didn't tell me that. I would never have let that be the promo code. MADNESS. There is a link. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. It's March MADNESS. It's the March madness, madness of the NAR settlement. It makes complete sense. It's the perfect promo code. It's easy to spell. All right. Code Magnus for 20% off. That it, Yeah. Use in it. In the description. Click the it, link. It's going right to be there. going away soon. It's, at least it the will name be. Of it will be. Yeah. Prices are going up too. Well, Mark, Price is going almost up. over. Prices exactly. are going up. But you, Eric, you know what? If, if, I don't, if you don't mind, I'm going to interrupt you here because you know what's working, Please. Eric? You know what's working is getting into BAMX and using Code Magnus. It's, it's getting into Reminder Media. It's all of the above. It's going to watch that live stream back. I mean, it's just the BAMX is, is the place to be. What else is working, Eric, in, in social mm -hmm. media terms, mm -hmm. is fabricating questions and answers. <laughs> fabricating. Fabricating. Yes, I agree so, with you, though. Yes, elaborate. Yes. So there has been a, a lot of engineered content throughout the years uh, from both Eric and myself, whether it be a, a text conversation for laughs or for engagements, uh, mm -hmm. or it could be slightly a Q&A. So sometimes I will go on my Instagram, and this has been working uh, for the last few weeks, I go on Instagram and I ask, you know, put the Q and A poll up there, and it's the same. My friends are chirping me, right? Paz says 19 things about how little my biceps are. My buddies, right? They all have something to say, but then there are some good questions, right? And they 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 are actually asking about my days and how do I do this and how do I do that. But if I really want to get something out there without actually just putting a camera to my face and saying it, like, hey Dan, do you, do you love reggaeton? Yes, I do. By the way, I speak Spanish. <laughs> Boom! I'll fabricate the question myself and then I'll answer it myself. So I've been doing that and sorry, right? But it's the same thing as when all these podcast episodes are coming out where someone's talking like this to literally themselves. In my mind, it is very similar. And in those questions, I'm adding value and it's getting something that I wanted to share out there to my audience. Maybe I somebody didn't think to ask about if I like Spanish music and I wanted to share that I did. So <laughs> sometimes fabricating uh, those kinds of questions uh, it works very well and it increases engagement, allows you to have some fun, gets whatever you want to talk about off of your plate. So that is what's working for me in, in my marketing and maybe even a little bit of a tip here uh, for social. And uh, Eric, what, what about you, my friend? Have you been fabricating or <laughs> engineering content? <laughs> That's a great hook right there. What's working for me is fabricating, lying yeah. about the questions. But I agree. What Dan is saying is in his Instagram stories, he could do the question sticker box, right? And mm -hmm. say, you know, ask me any question about the real estate market or ask me what it's like in Long Island or what inventory levels are like or something like that. And if someone doesn't give him the exact question he wants right away, <clears throat> he could just go in there from one of his other six fake accounts, comment himself. <laughs> you can do it from your actual comments. account. That, you that's even worse. You I used yeah. to do this all the time during the pandemic. I was basically just having conversations with myself. <laughs> I fake DMs to myself. Every time I get like, 
anytime I post on my story that it's a, you know, DM someone talking shit to me, it's me. It's, it's my <laughs> other account, Dr. Clickstein talking shit to myself. Dr. There's a reason. Uh-huh. Yeah. Dr. Clickstein. It's a great, great name. Yeah. It was Dr. Stickstein before I changed it to clicks. Once I started clicks. getting more clicks. Yeah. Um, you, you I think get, any yeah, sticks and clicks. I mean, come on now. Sticks and clicks, exactly. Yeah. I like that too. Yes, Natalie. I think Thoughts? the content creator um, starts out as talking to themselves. Like that's absolutely true. <laughs> you're thinking of an idea, and you're like this, and then you're like playing the other part. And if you do skits at all, I mean, that's it's fun. It actually yeah, is. It it's is. a lot of fun. Yes, it is. And by the way, Natalie. you could put Snapchat filters on your face if you want to do little TikTok filters where you're having conversations with yourself. Basically, yes. you you could just have a bunch of fake accounts and you could start your own media <laughs> empire just talking to yourself. That's how all this started. I have the Bad Real Estate Picks account, the Now Bam account, the Dr. Clickstein account, the Viral Agent account. I had the Digital Game account. I had, a, I had so many accounts just having conversations with each other that they get more conversations going Over-ass in podcast. your comments. Oh, here's another tip, Dan. Here's another one. In your comment section, use one of your other accounts. Start the conversation, right? So if you want people to be commenting on your Instagram and maybe the caption is a question like, what are you seeing in the market right now? Or, you know, what are your major pitfalls at buying? Comment from one of your other ghost accounts, pin that comment, and that starts Mm. the conversation going Mm. because other people see that someone else is commenting. That's going to get more comments. Pause. What do you think about that? Mm. That is, it's, it's maniacal. It's maniacal. It's crazy. It's sneaky, <laughs> and I love it. It's love crazy, it. yes. It, so if you're listening here, media. fabricate, it, lie, create a fake text conversation, uh-huh. you know? If Do you it. have no less than seven burner accounts on your Instagram and or Facebook and or Twitter, then you are not doing it right. And you heard it here first on the walkthrough. <laughs> By the way, make sure to throw us a like. Make sure to throw us a comment if you have any burner accounts. Natalie, oh, what is, <laughs> Eric? Yeah, yes. L- let me just say this. Yeah, throw us throw us a comment about your burner accounts. Throw us a comment on what you think agents should be posting around in our settlement. You know what I found out, Dan? When we get specific about asking what people to comment on, they're more likely to comment. If we just say throw us a like, throw us a comment, it's like, what am I going to comment? You know? Yeah. Happy birthday, Eric. Uh, Thank you. Happy, you know, happy comment. Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, sorry, Dan. No, no, go I, ahead. I'm still saying it's my birthday. Natalie, do you fabricate any content uh, on your Instagram or, or what is working for you that maybe isn't fabrication? <laughs> it's I haven't fake. gone down the fabrication uh, too much yet, but now I have a new idea. Thank you, Dan. Um, what's working for me, honestly, is a lot less effort than I ever put in before. And it might just be a period of time that I'm having that little boom with my content. Um, I'm doing a lot of green screen. Shout out to Bam and the encouragement with green screen. Um, And it'll be like a screenshot, like what I did last week was a screenshot of my Google maps in my car. And it was 32 miles to get, or 32 minutes to get two miles. This is like LA, right? And that's where Mm -hmm. I used to live. So that's what I was talking about. I said, oh my God, the traffic and this and that. What that created was engagement. I said, you know, comment with your best route from Naples to Bonita. And mostly people were like, it's a shit show everywhere. Right. Like get a scooter, ride a bike. (laughs) Like, but it was a way to be like, okay, it's such a niche audience that I'm getting when I'm posting specifically about the lifestyle, good, bad, or ugly, you know, in where I'm at, especially Mm -hmm. because it's an older demographic for the most part, although there's millennials and new, you know, new money coming in and people are on social. And it's like, I'm trying to get anyone on social in Naples who might be our age age range to engage with, with me. I want to know these people. I don't really care about the rest of the, the country when it comes to real estate in my niche. So I'm literally just getting on camera and inventing, if you will, maybe telling a story um, and saying things that I think others are thinking, but they're not saying mm-hmm. because it might not be like professional or business related, but my platform is for entertainment and for connection. That's and, and Natalie too, like the, the podcast that you are doing with uh, that the mortgage professional, I believe is my. Um, it, it's actually partner? Lance. No, yeah. Lance Martinicchio is yeah a compass agent, but we have had some a mortgage guy on. on the like show. I, I love those. Like you got your guys' Thank banter you. is hilarious. It's talking about hyper local Naples stuff. You guys are joking around, right? And and to your point, you are going to get not not many people are are our age in that marketplace, right? So you kind of have a little bit of a, a niche Absolutely. there. So you're you're going after the Eric's who's been looking for two years in, in Brentwood, California. You're going after the myself, the, the pauses, and yes. you're doing a really, really good job with it. So thank you, thank yeah, you. Of course, yeah. If what, what's your Instagram handle, Natalie? I don't at 
Natty PB, N A T T Y okay. PB, like peanut butter. Time out, time out, time out. Time out. Settle down. No, no, settle. Let me get to this point. All right, go ahead, Dan. You, you, you always call a timeout mid great point. I'm following up on on what Natalie was. Go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. You go. You go. I was just going to say, <laughs> it wasn't that great of a point, actually. <laughs> I was going to say, we've covered Natalie multiple times on the show as like marketer of the week. Her hyper local content is incredible. Like yeah. that 90s, but what was that one video you did that went super viral in Naples? I don't know if I got 50,000, 100,000 views, but it was about oh, like what a 90s yeah. kid would think about the. It the, was just, the changing landscape of restaurants right. or something. It was Naples 90s kids, where you at? And it was just two green screens up and down of places that used to exist that now are Hyundai dealerships or whatever. And what was funny with that is that the swearing on Instagram, usually it bleeps it out. It did not bleep it out. So it ended up having all of the my cuss words, which were several. Yeah. Um, got some haters. And I was like, wait a minute. This is was a kind of an accident with the swearing, but it just opened up conversation and people could relate to it. Do I, ha- maybe they don't even know I'm an agent or I sell houses. That doesn't matter right now. It's like reeling them in. And if I, can I get a nugget, you know, if I have a listing or if I meet them in public and they connect, which has happened, they'd be like, oh my gosh, I love your Instagram, blah, blah, blah. And then we start chatting and then you actually have the relationship. The fact that I sell real estate is going to come out one way or another. It doesn't need to be like my calling card. So those right. videos are a lot of fun and I appreciate it so much. Going Thanks. viral in your neighborhood, going viral in your hometown, that is the move. The, the goal should not be for agents to go viral globally or in the country, right? Because then you're just picking up a bunch of followers that don't want to consume your hyper-local content. So love that, Natalie. Dan, I'm sorry to interrupt you about the, the timeout you were calling. <laughs> No, we, we, uh, we're on the same wavelength, same wavelength because I was going to also bring that up. But what I was going to say was, Natalie, you didn't even thank us for having you on as the marketer over the week and for playing that video for the last 12 weeks. We need to have you start watching the show more because I watched the that. show and actually I saw something on our Facebook group, the BAM Facebook group, and I saw my video there. I was like, oh my gosh, they saw it. That's how I found out. Okay. But I didn't. I must have missed that video. Yeah, I'm next time, send Dan a, a written letter, a yes. personal card, thanking yep. him and thanking Will us do. for for yes. that. Okay, <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, pause. I know that there is a ton working for you right now on social, whether it be you guys popping confetti cannons in the office, whether it be you guys in Samoan outfits and, and wrestling every day, or whether it be just your, your sales trainings that you guys do uh, every single day and you highlighting them. Yeah. So what Samoan. is working for you? And they really do that, I swear to God. It's like, you, you, ever, you ever been in Monsters, Inc. You, or watch Monsters, Inc. where there's just like 95 <laughs> doors in and out. There's just conf- like confetti cannons going off everywhere. There's just glitter. There's 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 like uh, fidget spinners. Like you, you have to like watch yourself when you're walking to the office. Otherwise, you're, you're Nerf just, guns, yeah. fart spray. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's like it's like jackass just walking around. Yeah. There. <laughs> I told really Reese that she needs to get the door that like, you know, you walk into it and just will duff. Posnick, but she said it wouldn't work <laughs> for insurance purposes. But pause. What else? What else yeah. is working aside from all of that and the social proof uh, for you guys right now? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is you got to re- figure out who is the consumer that you're targeting, right? Like, I think Natalie, your point is so good that so often agents make content that yeah, it might be funny or cool for agents, and you get a bunch of agents around the country, which is great for referrals. But like, what is your actual goal? If it's to get buyers and sellers and to show the consumer that you're the hyper local expert. Or is that, is that what you're accomplishing? Like, Eric, you can make funny stuff, like you said earlier, for agents. That's your target audience. If you go and do house tours, no one's going to care, right? And so we look at it that we have two audiences. Right? I mean, it's true. No one's going to care. We've got agents that we're trying to attract, and then we've got consumers that we're trying to attract. There's a company. The agent is my first customer. The agent is my first client for recruiting, for retention, for training. And so having tidbits of trainings to show the, the value that we bring But then having confetti cannons and Dan O'Neill getting whitewashed for losing a bet at the office is amazing for retention and culture because we're bringing clowns like Dan O'Neill into the office who bring some value, but also making him (laughs) our pet by making him whitewash himself in the snow after he loses a bet. And then we take it a step further to having like the talking head stuff where Lisa or I are actually bringing knowledge. But it's all about who your target consumer is and keeping it short and having a pet like Dan O'Neill. No, well, yeah, yeah, uh, but we should we should go about the fact that you did lose to me in ping pong, and you were supposed to wear chubbies to the office, which I know that you were excited about, and you, and you did not. So, can we just put that on, for the, on the record? That is on the record. Pause, is there, that is factual. Right, is there a reason you didn't wear the chubbies? Are you an all upper body guy? Do you no, have twig he, legs? He's got he's legs, got some good legs. He wanted to wear. Sure he does. 
I had to go on a listing appointment that day and wearing chubbies and then going on a listing appointment may have cost me the business. Yeah. 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 I just wanted that on the record. Just wanted that on the record. <laughs> Dan's was very good at ping pong. Very good at ping pong. By the way, I think I mentioned this last time. Do you notice how much uh, hydration pause has to keep having? He, he's finished that entire green juice here. We're about 20 minutes into the episode. He's drinking an entire gallon of water and green juice. Lifters and gym rats always have to just be consuming water just nonstop. It's crazy. Anyway, take a sip of water. Shirt this video like. show to avoid the comments and you just come at yeah. it and I love it all the time. Do you, do you, do you have to tuck in like your shoulder to like make the definition of the bicep? He's drinking I've another sip right like, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm awkward. You're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> now I'm questioning my whole existence. Look, he just, he just switched from green, from green juice know, to the Fiji to water already. He's going back and forth. Doesn't know what to do with his hands. Anyway, Dan, I'll oh. tell you what's working in, in, uh, in our real estate marketing right now. If you're, if you care, this is, this is actually huge. It's not huge, but this has been working for a while. It's all live stream content. The live stream content has been crushing with us in terms of conversions, getting email address, getting people into BAMX. People like the live content. They like the organic feel for that. So I think the more live content agents can do on Instagram live, on YouTube live, live podcasts, I think it's just better retention for the audience. Even if you're having audio problems or whatever it is, it just it makes that content a little bit more interesting. And then another piece of content that's working really well is FOMO content. So anytime I screenshot the open rate of our emails, or I mention how many agents were on a live stream, or how many people consume this piece of content, it makes other people want to follow and watch that piece of content. So we had the the NAR live stream yesterday. We had 2000 live viewers on it. I screenshotted that saying, you know, join 2000 other agents live on the stream. And it got like 800 link clicks in my Instagram story. And that's probably because of the way I crafted that content. If I just put out there, you know, join us live for the NAR settlement call, people aren't necessarily going to click on that. But once you hear, oh my God, there's so many other more agents, then they're more likely to click that link. So if you're an agent listening to this and you want to get people into your email list or consume a piece of content, maybe you screenshot your open rate or you screenshot how many people are clicking on your content or you screenshot the actual email newsletter itself and say, Hey, you got to get into my weekly newsletter. Uh, it has a 70% open rate and I'm giving out all the hyper local, you know, tips for, uh, consumers in Naples. So just yes. making sure people see how many people are consuming that piece of content is going to get more people to click. So that's really working. Did love, you ever read David that. Ogilvy's book? Like, uh, you know, who David Ogilvy is obviously. It's my cousin. <laughs> He's like the godfather of marketing. Phenomenal no. book. He talks about exclusivity and making people feel special. Yeah. No. And, Catcher in the Ryan think, uh, Holes. Only two books I've ever read. <laughs> <laughs> and and, Eric, and Moneyball should... <laughs> with Billy Bean. Eric, I think we need to also clarify too, uh, FOMO is fear of missing out. And to your point, which, which I uh, love, Natalie's doing a really good job with that with her hyper-local Naples content. Paz is doing that with their, their behind-the-scenes office content. And we're trying to do it with some of the vlogs and everything that we're doing here. It makes people want to work with you. It makes people want to join. It makes people want to, you know, go to Naples like I do. It makes me want to go up to Jason Posnick's office and smack him upside the head with a with a ping pong paddle. All of the above. So FOMO, fear of missing out, is maybe the word of the week here, my friend. FOMO, exactly. FOMO. If you have a piece of content that got a lot of views, post about it. Show people in your story. Say, there's a reason why fifty thousand people watch this video. Have you seen it yet? Ooh. And you're like, oh my god, no, I haven't seen it yet. Wow. Fifty thousand other people watched it. I want to watch it right there. <laughs> FOMO content is the move in 2024. You know what else is the move, Dan? Mm -hmm. You know what else is the move? This is a staple in the real estate community. It is called Reminder Media. Mm -hmm. If you're an agent, you're looking to stand out from the crowd. Reminder Media is a resource you have to check out. You get your own branded digital and printed magazine. You get email newsletters, social content. Reminder Media delivers these resources to your contacts on autopilot, keeping you top of mind with your database. All you need to do is focus on your follow-up calls, and watch referrals and repeat business come in. Check out the link in the description to Reminder Media. Why are you laughing? That was a great read. That was smooth. That was a great transition. Yes, that was great. I look down and at you. You of, look like you're about to explode. Yeah, well, the way that you said referrals sounded like you had your Invisalign in. But uh, speaking of FOMO, <laughs> it, it will give you FOMO if you are not a member of Reminder Media. And if you are not using code Gandalf to get into BAMX. <laughs> Yeah, use code Gandalf the Gray for 30% <laughs> off. And we will take you straight to the Shire. <laughs> By the way, I just watched I just watched the Two Towers again on uh, on Netflix or whatever it's on. It's such a good movie. 
game uh, yeah, uh, Lord I don't of the Rings. I know what that is. Yep, no. nope, never seen it. Nope. All right. Well, uh, moving on. Make sure to like. Make sure to comment here if you've ever seen the Twin Towers on uh, Netflix or whatever it is that Eric <laughs> watched it on. Uh, make sure to wish him a happy birthday. And let's get into what our favorite things maybe that we've seen. Best marker of the week. Let's Eric, do it. We got four marketers of the week here. Woo! We got four genius clips. And Dan, I think I have something here. I think I might have found the best hook in real estate history here by Jerome Sells. I swear to God, if this is a five second long video that is on repeat that makes me go to the caption all the way. Oh, to what the are you bottom, gonna do? I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna snap. Yeah, this is. So it's good. not. All right. This actually looks sick. It's so good. James this Bond. guy already looks sick. Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh, phone call here. Jackson Jerome here. Oh, you'd like to buy it, Big White? Yeah, I could show you the unit. I'll meet you there in ten minutes. I mean, that has to be him. Wow. Oh, wow. Phone call. I mean, wow. Fantastic hook. He's mentioning he's 10 minutes away from the listing. So he's talking wow. about proximity to these ski resorts, to these mountains. He looks great. Yeah, he was... looks like a professional skier. Just an incredible video. It has to be him, up. right? Has yeah. I think so. I was thinking the same thing. And he was freezing his ass off in the lift, and I was like, "You got this." Yeah, he's in <laughs> a full, awesome. he's just in a straight business suit, not wearing any snow gear. That was, that was suit supply too. That wasn't like a an express or, or like a H and M suit like that. Imagine if I tried to do that kind of video, I would tear my ACL. Like just getting <laughs> yeah. off of the lift, like I wouldn't even. Who's get sucking you really? into the snow? Just that's leg the video snaps. we need to make. Yeah. Yeah. That would be the video yeah. of the week for me. Yeah, yeah that's right. exactly. <laughs> video of my life. <laughs> great, great Seriously. video, <laughs> great video, Eric. Go apologize. You know that was actually elite. You know what it reminded me of the Paige Steckling video that we showed where she, you know, whacks a golf ball and then talks about like, hey, if you want to live by a golf course, do this. So I think it's just a great I <clears throat> sorry, a great idea for agents. <laughs> a great idea for agents to uh show proximity to their listings by doing whatever activity is close by. So if it's a golf course, maybe it's a bowling alley. Well, maybe not a bowling alley. Can we uh could we tee up what Paz's favorite marketing of the week was? Yeah, what do we oh, got here? Pause. Somebody benching a 495 pound dumbbell at Muscle Beach, <laughs> Miami. Or it's going to be Sharon from oh, it's Real Sharon, of course. Coca Cola. All right. Coca Cola spend seven and a half million dollars on a short Super Bowl commercial. Uh, they do that for one reason because they don't even sell it in the ad. They don't ask you to go buy a Coca Cola. They do it so that the brand is so embossed in your memory that when you walk into a 7-Eleven, you pick up a Coca-Cola above everything else, and that is time on brand. Time on brand is the new call to action. Instead of you saying at the end of your email, call me, uh, or at the end of your video, message me, all you have to do is they just have to spend more time with you, more time on your brand, more time listening to you, more time connected to you, because the more time they spend with you, the more time they spend on your brand, because time on brand is the new call to action. Why does Coca-Cola it applies, right? That's why I liked it. I'm not even part of real. I'm Thanks, not man. part of real. Done with it. But like, here's the deal, right? Time on brand. You just got to put out more content and people like show them who you are. If you could build rapport before the appointment, how amazing would that be? Fucking right. time on, freaking time on brand. Time on yeah. brand. Love baby. that. You know what I, you know what else I like about that? The POV style, like you're riding in the car with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those videos always do great. We played a Shane Bergman video, I think last week, where it was like drive by showings where he was talking about how. You know, the floorboards were made out of like ice cream or something. I don't remember the exact details of it, but it was it was a great video drive bys. I'm off my game today, folks. It's March Madness. U of A plays in an hour. That's all I could think about. They got to cover 17 and a half. Natalie, what's the best thing that you've seen? No, they'll cover. What's the best thing you've seen this week? I saw a collab video, which is, a, I guess, a point that I'm on. the like, love the collabs. This was um, I follow Chris our boy Chris, and this came up, and I thought it was just so special. God damn it, Chris is so good, man. It's, yeah, I mean, the caption, the fact it says, like, new announce, or a big announcement coming soon, it got, I don't even know these people, but it, <laughs> It stopped me because a lot of times we see funny stuff and like inspirational stuff, but this was like a cinematic moment for a homeowner. And it's like, that's, I thought it was great. 
Can I can I skip mine? Can I skip my mark? Because you can't have me going forth after that video. My, mine mine is not even like that. <laughs> you sure you don't want to show it, Dan? We could show it. We we could show it. It it. It, 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 it. it ain't nothing like what you guys have just shown. I mean, the guy just skied 130 miles an hour to his listening. <laughs> Chris Benjamin has me in tears. I don't even know the people. It looks like they just bought a house. And now we're going to talk like, you know, all right, tee it up. How Here's three things I wish I knew when I was a brand new agent. Number one is I wish I had the confidence to know that big deals can be done by anyone. I thought I had to like graduate to this certain level to become in this exclusive group that could sell a million dollar house or a $2 million house. And I have newsflash for you. The agents that are doing those deals are being wrong with confidence. They don't have all the answers, but they have the confidence to say, gosh, yes, I can do that. Great question. Let me figure out the answer. And then they just go figure it out and they be resourceful and they get it done. So mm -hmm. think big sooner. A deal with six zeros or three zeros is the exact same. Number two is as simple as this sounds. I wish I would have just had a CRM and I would have put everyone that I've ever met or known, I would have put them in there. And then anybody that I meet and that I say, hey, I'm a realtor, I'd love to help you. I'm an investor, I'd love to serve you. I wish I would have put them in a systematic way just so I could keep in touch with them. I can't tell you how much business I've lost on the back of a napkin. Last but not least, you guys, and this is gonna be so simple, but the most important thing you can do as a realtor, answer the phone, baby. When someone calls, answer the phone, be a professional, go solve problems. I know I joke I'm the most valuable follow of 2024 for realtors, but I am. Follow for more. I'm going to take oh. care of you. I'm going to give you everything that's inside my brain. That was pretty good. Yeah. 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 So that was good. Point of it, it's like these subtle, simple reminders. It, the, the video yeah. did well. And I think that, um, you know, agents can use that. But I think also the, um, like a day in the life content through agents or for agents, whether it be in, in our office or on the team that are going through daily experiences with their, with their clients, I think it's important to showcase some of that, right? Like showcasing it is a little bit difficult uh in the business maybe showcasing some of the things that you wish you did sooner um, yeah so and helping. even for your for your customers if you're you know maybe not other agents but your customers because i yep. think that's like wow this person's honest they have nothing to hide yep. and they're confident i think that's great it's relatable it's the same as so many other jobs and industries like you're a human yeah and we work with people great... we, we do not make money unless the other person exists Great video, Dan. I'm glad you Dan, shared stop it. Stop flexing. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just I'm picking up the mic. This thing's 195 pounds. It's gonna break my arm in half. All right. Well, uh, yeah. yeah there, those are the marketing of the week. I mean, I think we just went 12 for uh, 11 and a half for 12 there. Um, I think uh, we should get into Bam X. Eric, what what else do we have here? 60 second social Thanks. tip. We already did. Yeah, we did it. We we covered all three topics. I think we know what to post, what not to post with the yeah. NAR settlement. We had some good ideas about text fabrication, mm -hmm. comment fabrication, get the engagement going, some great Make hyper local tips from Natalie. We saw Jason consume six gallons of liquid <laughs> in a 45 minute time period. You hear him throw it? It, it? it sounded like the bottle owed him, owed him rent money. It sounded like <laughs> yeah. something like crashed it. It sounded like you know, a I thought it was Shohei Otani like taking batting <laughs> practice back there. It's ridiculous. By the way. Like, By the way, it is eyes, it is March Madness. Yep. Maybe do some March Madness content, uh, bracket challenge with your clients. Probably too late to create a bracket group right now, but yep. mentioned this last week. How about the best places to watch the games in Naples? You go to Mercado, mm -hmm. right? The best places yeah, to watch the Final Four, the best beer gardens to check out. Um, yeah, you know, March That's Madness great. content. The Final Four, the Final Four mm -hmm. restaurants that yeah. I would go to mm -hmm. really if I was. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Can I add something? I know we kind of, please. the collaborator aspect on Instagram, um, I just got to make a plug for that because I think it's so powerful if you're doing local content and with our podcast, for example, and that's a separate thing than my audience, but not really because I collaborate with myself, the podcast, the guest, my co-host, all of their audience sees it. And it's, it makes that FOMO even more. It's like anyone seeing that is going to live here or want to go to the place that you know, the guest owns at the wellness place. And they're like, oh, what's that? They feel so much more connected because Instagram and social media can be overwhelming where it's like feels so far away. But if we can make it super niche and small and valuable, like an inch wide, a mile deep, um, I think the collaborator aspect of Instagram is like gold right now. Absolutely. Collab with those yeah. local businesses. You're doing a restaurant review. You're doing a wellness review. Hit that collab button. They're going to be pumped to collab because their audience, their followers, their network is probably nowhere near the real estate agent who's putting out consistent content. They're desperate for content, all these local businesses. So hitting that collab is a great idea. Great Let's, finishing point no. there, Natalie. Wow. Great opening appearance. 
Yeah. Oh Wouldn't you say so? I'm we got so excited. Crushed we got to have you. We got to have you back on the show weekly. I, I would that's a nine say. Three. I love that's that. I'm so flattered. Adam. Flattered. Yeah. I feel like I don't even deserve to be here, but I guess that's just me accepting that like what you guys teach works and it's a space where we can chat about it and see each other grow. And I just, I feel so lucky to be here. Blessed. Well, we're lucky. We're lucky to have you, have you in the community and pause. We are really lucky to have you because if you want motivation, <laughs> you got to get in Bam X, use code madness yeah. for 20% off because pause drops videos of him, yeah. you know, pacing around outside <laughs> in the office, motivational <laughs> stuff. But honestly, it's really it good. Is. It fires it you good. up. It does. It, it's really good content. Follow Jason Posnick, follow yep. Natalie, follow Danny Deals. Throw this video like if you're getting good uh, tips out of this because we are trying to help agents on a weekly basis with their marketing and we really appreciate the audience. And make sure you watch the replay of yesterday's NAR settlement mm -hmm. live stream. That thing's almost at 10,000 views. There's a little FOMO. Mm -hmm. There's a little verbal hook right there to get you mm -hmm. to watch that video. Thank yeah. you. And may the force be with you. Go Arizona. Bear mm -hmm. down. See you in the final four. You better cover. I'm going to be losing my shirt. Hit the music. Yeah, Hit the music. Here. Hit the music. music.